I'm Brooke Wright. I teach at a small university in West Central Texas, McMurray University. Uh, I was hired on as part of the Title V grant that McMurray was awarded. It's a grant that's awarded to universities that are Hispanic serving institutions. And so as part of this grant, uh, kind of the STEM side of this grant is renovating lab, uh, changing the way that you deliver some of your content. And so when I came on, I came on in the fall, that was my main goal was to kind of change how we delivered our AMP content so that we could maybe increase retention, um, lower the um, WD rate, increase grades. And so we started, well, before I came on, they started looking at some different ways to kind of change up the AMP labs. And they started looking at the digital cadaver tables. And I don't know if anyone's seen those or heard of those, but they're, they're pretty neat. They're six foot long tables and you have a 3D cadaver image on there that you can manipulate, uh, you can dissect things, you can select structures. And so that was the direction that we started heading. But when we started thinking about it and started looking into it, the tables were fairly expensive and it was just not super user friendly for our students. They would have to come up to the lab if they wanted to see these images and we would have to coordinate lab times and instructors to come up and show the students how to use the tables and be there to monitor the students. And so we started going in a different direction with something that was maybe more accessible for the students. And so that's when we started looking at these online pl platforms and we narrowed it down to two platforms. Um, one of them, I hope nobody from 3D4 Medical is listening to this. One of them was 3D4 Medical uh, and the other one was Visible Body. And so my job in the fall was to go into both of these platforms and kind of see which one would fit our students and our university better. And so with 3D4 Medical, the graphics were really nice, but it was just not user friendly. Um, they didn't have courses set up. You kind of had to go in and search for each particular thing that you wanted to put into a module. Um, and then with Visible Body, well, first of all, I can't speak enough to the support staff. When I send an email um, with a question or asking help, I get a response almost immediately. And the people at Visible Body know who I am, they know who McMurray is, and so they can kind of help, you know, guide me along the path or help guide me along the path of creating this AMP content um, with some of the other platforms. You know, I'd send in a question and then it would go to their support team and then I would get a response back and it was never the same person. And so, you know, I'd always kind of have to retell my whole troubleshooting problem. And so, you know, Visible Body is just so amazing with the people that are there to help you um, build these courses and, and build this content. So, you see, let me check my notes, make sure that I don't miss anything. Um, so when we started to deliver content through Visible Body, it was in the spring semester, we piloted uh, the program with a group of AMP1 students. And so at the beginning, what I would do is I would lecture. I had content through the Mariab AMP textbook. And so I'd lecture you know, with PowerPoint and then I would have modules in Visible Body that they would work through. And then once the pandemic hit and we had to shift to online, the shift was so easy because I already had everything set up and ready to go in Visible Body. And the students, you know, they already knew the routine, they knew how to log on, they knew how to get in and take the quizzes. And so um, I built my exams right in Visible Body. Students got on and took online exams. Um, and so really the transition for us was pretty seamless. I even sent out a survey at the end of the semester and students said, you know, how easy it was in this class to transfer to online learning because we were already pretty much doing online learning. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to show you kind of what my course looked like before 
Uh, sorry, I can't click and talk at the same time. Uh, before we went uh, to fully online and then after, and now what I'm doing for uh, summer school, I'm teaching AMP1 uh, fully online for the summer and I'm doing asynchronous lectures. And so that looks a little bit different too. It's kind of um, morphing as, as we go along. So this is my uh, navigation page. These are all the courses that I've built. Um, I have a, quite a few in here. I played around quite a bit in the fall. And so the AMP1, this is what I taught in the spring. And so it's really nice the way that Visible Body has their content set up. They have, let's see if I can move this. They have these pre-made courses for you that are already built. And so depending on what text you're using um, or what uh, like anatomy lab manual you're using, they have correlations already set up and ready to go for you, which is pretty amazing. Now, I actually had a workshop on Visible Body, uh, talked to high school teachers and some professors, and I said, if you had to go fully online tomorrow with your AMP course, you could do it with Visible Body. You know, you really just need to click and copy the course and everything's set up and ready to go. It really depends on how much you want to customize the course as to um, how much time it takes to build these courses. And so, you know, the textbook correlations in the spring, I used um, the Maria correlation because that was what I taught with before when I was doing, I did dual credit uh, through a local university. And so I used the Mariab uh, correlation, but now I've actually moved to an open source AMP textbook. It's OpenStax. I don't know if anyone's used OpenStax or heard of OpenStax. It's amazing because it's free and it covers everything that you need to cover in an introductory AMP course. And so especially for our students, a lot of them are work study students, a lot of them are using financial aid, a lot of them are parents, uh, and so it's really nice to have this free open source textbook to use along with the visible body content, which is really cost efficient too. Um, I think the Marriott textbook last time I checked was upwards of $250. A lot of students just don't buy the textbooks because they're just really expensive. And you go to sell it back to the bookstore and they give you what, $25. So, um, go down. so they have biology, they have um, kinesiology correlations. They even have a medical terminology uh, correlation that I'm actually gonna try to switch this to. I teach online medical terminology at McMurray and it's through another online platform that is really expensive <laughs> and they don't have good graphics. And so I think in the fall, we're gonna try to make the transition over to visible body. Um, so this is, I mean, it's, this is a lifesaver. It saves you so much time when you're looking at your, I'm a high school teacher, looking at your scope and sequence um, and your um, correlations. This is, it's really a time saver. Okay, so I'll get back to my courses. So this was my AMP1 course that I taught. Um, after we went online, I put my lecture exams in a folder and they would just go online and take the exams. We really didn't have long after uh, we went fully online. They only had to take a couple exams fully online. Uh, and surprisingly, the grades weren't inflated that much, which was nice. So they always have, this is always the first module that pops up, it's a getting started. It's kind of like a little PowerPoint and then I have them take the getting started quiz. I give them a couple of attempts. This is just so they know how to get on and navigate the content and work through the modules. And then we started out with the human body. So what I did was I posted my lecture slides on here. The great thing about Visible Body is that you can go and create assignments. You can upload your own content. You can do links to URLs, um, links to videos. You can upload PowerPoints, uh, and then you can build quizzes and tests in here. 
And so I also put outlines on here. There are Word documents that they would just uh, download and fill out. These outlines came from Visible Body. I tweaked them a little bit to kind of fit my course. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And then you know, we start in, the cells is the first module that Visible Body has on there. It's kind of like their online textbook. And so here's my lecture slides, there's the outline. And so I'll show you these modules. When you click on the link, it pops up with all of their units that correspond to this module, the cells. And so it has, you know, within the modules, they have videos, they have pictures, they have readings, but none of it is too overwhelming for students because I know a lot of times with some of the textbooks and some of the readings that students have to do, there's just it's just too much and students just kind of shut down when they see a long passage that they have to read. And so all of this is great information. The videos are great. Uh, they're 30 to 45 seconds long. They hit all the highlights that the students need to know. And so then the students just click through the modules and um, it'll pop up. This is one of their 3D images you can click and rotate, you can drag it around on the screen. And then they click these tabs over here and click this little definition button and it will define all the different tabs that they've clicked over here. And so for the students, they can go in and explore and spend as much time as they want to kind of figuring out all the little pieces or they can just click through and read and go on to the next module. So really for the students, if they want to delve in really deep to a topic, they can, or if they just want to get, you know, kind of the bare bones, like we know some students do, uh, they can do that too. And so let me go back. And so uh, the click through that, and then I have quizzes in here. You know, I'll have a practice quiz and a graded quiz. And so this is what, it looks like before we went fully online. After we went fully online, it was pretty much the same format, but I would do, I did synchronous lectures through Teams. And so I just pull up my lecture slides and Teams is kind of like Zoom. Um, and we would just work through the lectures. The students really liked the synchronous lectures because um, number one, it kind of kept them accountable. Uh, they had to show up and uh, kind of participate in the dis discussions. And then it also helped keep us connected. I know the students, once we went online, uh, really felt isolated uh, because a lot of the professors just put, you know, they would just put stuff up and say, okay, work through this by Friday. Uh, and so it really kind of helped the students, um, you know, kind of see, kind of see into my life a little bit. Uh, I would always have my toddler jump up on the screen and wave and say hi. I'd have cameos of my daughter running through the background. Uh, and so that was that was really nice to be able to do. But now uh, for my summer school, I'm doing asynchronous lectures. And so I've really kind of changed my formatting because I'm using this OpenStax book. I'm actually not doing uh, any lectures. The only thing that I'm recording are my labs because for the lectures, it's really, for AMP1, it's mostly memorizing bones, memorizing muscles, learning some of the structures. And so this is my lecture stuff. There's not, I mean, it's pretty much straight from the pre-made courses from Visible Body. I did go in and add uh, the outlines, and I've added crash course videos, if anyone's ever watched uh, I call him Fast Talking Hank because he talks really fast. Uh, but these videos are really good. And so I'll kind of delve into my labs. So what I've done for my labs, since they are fully online, uh, really, I don't feel like the students have missed out on learning any content or being able to um, see a model in person versus seeing it online. I actually think that the students are able to get more online through visible body than they are using a actual model in the lab because they're able to manipulate, they're able to uh, select and search for structures, and they're able to conceptualize the way that structures fit together 
better than you can with a model. I think one of my favorite examples is being able to look at the branches of the aorta and the heart. When you dissect, say, a sheep heart in the lab, you, know, you can see maybe the aortic arch if they haven't chopped it off when they uh, tried to preserve it. But students, you know, you can tell them, okay, the heart sits on, you know, this side of the body. And so this is why it's arched this way. And you can stand and say all that you want to, but until students are able to actually see that in a 3D model and turn it and manipulate it, um, they're really able to, to kind of see that. And I can show you that really quickly before I go into that, the labs. And so these are the apps that come with the uh, visible body. The anatomy and physiology, I kind of showed you that. That's where they have the modules that you work through. It's kind of their online textbook. Human Anatomy Atlas is like the best thing ever. It's like a 3D pocket cadaver that you can carry with you anywhere because you can actually download these onto uh, your phone or your tablet. And it's kind of neat because they have an augmented reality feature. My students always think it's so much fun to go home and put a skull on their table and you can look through your phone and you see a 3D skull sitting on your kitchen table. So it's always kind of, kind of fun. So this is the Anatomy Atlas. I'll show you the heart really quickly because it's just, it's just awesome. And I'm kind of a nerd, so I like this kind of stuff. So while this is loading too, if you guys want to start putting your questions into the um, chat box, um, we've got one from Deanna. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start with Deanna in a few minutes, but just go ahead and start typing those in. That way you can not forget what your question is. So thanks, Brooke. Oh, yeah. So um, this is just one of the views that you can look at. I like to kind of dissect stuff down. So you click dissect and you can just kind of cut away all of this stuff that um, you don't want to see, or you can go to the systems and just you know, get rid of the skeletal system, get rid of the ligaments. So, you know, this is just, it's just really neat. You can show the students the orientation of the heart, you know, instead of just seeing, um, you know, the aorta just kind of chopped off, you can say, okay, so this is why you know, you have just one branch going to the right side and you have the two uh, branches, you know, you have the, the carotid and the subclavian, um, you know, on the left side because of the way that the heart is oriented. And then you can show them uh, this. You can actually click on the structures and students at home can be like, okay, I know she said something about the subclavian and the left side of the body. What was she saying? Well, they can pull this up and they can click and say, oh yeah, now I remember what she was talking about. Instead of sending students home with a piece of paper that has you know, the, the veins and the arteries labeled, it's really hard to understand how everything is set up when you have you know, a 2D, usually black and white picture because it costs lots of money to print stuff in color. And so you know, it's just really great for the students to have and not only can they pull this up, you know, on their computer, they can do this on their phones while they're, you know, sitting in a waiting room at, you know, the doctor's office, while they're uh, eating lunch in the cafeteria, you know, anywhere they have their phone, they can access this stuff and study. So there's, you know, there's no excuse. <laughs> That's what I like to tell my students. Okay, so, and then muscle premium, um, that's really for the muscular system. We, uh, the kinesiology people really like this. For AMP, we really stick to the human anatomy atlas. But the muscle premium is neat because it shows the muscle actions. It shows the origins and the insertions of these different muscles. Um, so that's kind of a, kind of a handy tool. So my labs, what I've actually done, um, the first couple of labs, uh, like tissues and things like that, I would just go and narrate my, uh, I had PDFs and I converted them to PowerPoint and then narrated those until I figured out that I could do, I don't know if anyone's heard of Screencast-O-Matic, but that's a really nice, um, it's free uh, online, uh, platform that you can use to capture what you see on your screen and you can narrate over that. And so 
uh, what I did was, let's see, I would actually go and narrate those. I, I cannot click and talk at the same time. And I have a YouTube channel where I have all of these uh, narrations kind of pulled up and it's me going through the Visible Body app. I don't know if y'all can hear that or not. I'll mute it because I don't like to hear myself talk. And so I'm actually going through the Human Anatomy Atlas, working through their lab, showing them the different structures, uh, talking about the different structures. And each of the videos, because I'm using the free version, they have to be less than 15 minutes. Uh, but that's really the perfect amount of time for a student to say, okay, I have 15 minutes, I can sit down and do this little snippet uh, really quickly. And so you know, this is what I've done for all of my bone labs, all of my muscle labs. And I think it's really helped the students because instead of me standing up you know, with a skeleton, you know, this is like the online version of me pointing out the structures on a skeleton. And this is actually what I did with my kids in the spring before we went fully online. I had them all come into the lab with our laptops. I had them pull up the visible body on their laptops and I projected my uh, visible body screen on the projector and we would all work through all of this together. I did have the 3D models next to them and so that uh, kind of helped to be able to see it, you know, sometimes in a different view. Uh, but I really think students haven't missed out on any content because we, we were using this online already. Um, and the awesome thing about uh, the Title V grant, I have to say, uh, they're, they've remodeled a lab for us to use so that we can use Visible Body. Um, they've set up a whole, the back wall is just full of computers. We have movable tables and movable chairs, and they have um, drop down extension cords so that students can hook up their laptops so that everyone can be on Visible Body. Uh, while we're doing the lectures in the lab. So I'm really excited about that. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, be face to face at least for a little while in the fall. Um, okay, I think, I think that's about all I have. I can um, close out this video. Um, yeah, so I guess if we have some questions, I will try to answer those. Great, thank you so much, Brooke. All right, so like I um, said, we've got a question from De Deanna. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but Deanna, I will um, unmute you. And then you just need to unmute yourself on your end and you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi, I'm just wondering if you can use a textbook in the visible body for setting up the course, but then actually use OpenStack because my institution just switched to OpenStack. So I'm curious about that. And how many, like, can you put the applications that you just showed us for lab on more than just one device, like your phone and your school computer and your laptop? So there, I guess there's two questions. Um, so since this is online, mm -hmm. if you can get to a web browser, you can access it on okay. any laptop or any computer. The yeah. apps, I believe is just one device. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just like any other app. So if you, you know, like drop your iPad and break it and have to get a new one, uh, it can, it'll just be restored onto your, your new device, but you can only have it on one, one mobile device. But mm -hmm. now if you have an iPad and are connected to the internet, then you can always pull up the web browser and, and do it that way instead of using the, the app mo mobile version. Uh, and for the textbook, um, what probably what I would say is because you probably already have stuff built using the old textbook. Correct. Yeah. Um, so what I would do, whatever your LMS is, if you use like Moodle or Canvas or Blackboard, I would just keep your, the content that you already have, I would just keep that in your LMS and then just do a link to the visible body OpenStax content and then just, slowly morph <laughs> over oh. to visible body that way you don't have to just scrap what you have because that's that's what I did with Mary Ebb. and I used a lot of my old Mary Ebb stuff the open stack sequencing is a it's a little different um, but I really didn't have to change 
too much because most, you know, most AMPs, they start with, uh, you know, the language of anatomy and then they get into cells and tissues and then the integument um, and then usually uh, bone tissue and skeletal system. So it should be pretty, pretty similar. I can show you, I mean, you know, human body cells, tissues, mm -hmm. I think most, most are usually set up that way. So what you could do is, you know, just link your content, um, you know, like you can create an assignment if you want to do it all in visible body. Uh, you can just upload files of your content that you already have uh, from your old textbook, um, or you can, you know, kind of keep your old textbook in the LMS and and in this, uh, do OpenStax Invisible Body. And with that link to the URL, you can also even link out to that OpenStax content so that you've got a direct line for your students with Invisible Body, and they can then just click and it will take them to the corresponding material in the OpenStax website. I may have that. I don't know if I have that or that linked or not, but yeah. I hope, did I answer all your questions? Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go to, um, and I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce this, uh, Thayer. Go ahead, you just need to unmute yourself on your end. Yep, you actually said it right. I'm really proud of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I was just wondering, does Visible Body include a textbook, including, you know, the Visible Body Lab software, or do you, people normally choose a different textbook? Is it all integrated into one? So they don't have, like, their own textbook. Textbook, really, this uh, anatomy and physiology app it's kind of like their textbook, but if you want an outside textbook so that you can, you know, hit on maybe some more pathology um, stuff, or if you have, you know, like a kinesiology textbook, um, then you can do that. But really what, they, what they've done with their pre-made courses is they've correlated the scope and sequence of whatever textbook you have with what content they have in this anatomy and physiology app and so really you honestly don't need an outside textbook especially if you do um, some lectures and some narrations and yep. upload those videos um, yeah and we do a lot of uploading um, of our lectures and we provide slides and things like that for them to follow along with so yeah. I'm guessing between the two that actually might make a good match um, what is the pricing for visible body. You want me to take that one, Brooke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we offer um, different purchase options. And um, so the price for visible body for a student purchase is $49.99. And that gives students access to the visible body courseware platform, which includes the view that Brooke is showing here, these four web apps. And we're actually adding a fifth app, Pathology and Physiology, that's going to be live probably in the next couple of weeks. So for $49.99, students get access to five web apps plus course materials for two full years. Um, in addition to that, they also get access to the mobile apps, so a permanent mobile download that they can then put on their device, um, and that does not expire. Um, we do offer institutional pricing options um, that start at $40 for one year of access. Um, and we also offer uh, volume discounts um, that it starts with 250 students. And we can combine purchases from a variety of departments at one university. Um, if, you know, people are coming together, we can kind of share the love without it being complicated. People are able to, to still have their own experience. Um, but able to offer students a, a reduced price. So you'd want to work with your uh, visible body rep to determine the specific pricing. We also have um, K-12 specific pricing as well. How do we find out who our visible body rep is? Um, so if you want to put your information in the chat box, um, you, what we'll do is connect you with your rep and they'll follow up with you as soon as we're done today. We'll share Great. the information. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, there. Um, thank you. All right, so I'm going to go over to Karen Sherman. Go ahead, Karen. You just have to unmute yourself. 
Hi. Hi. Um, this looks so great. I just love it. I teach a practical nursing program, and we have like a 65-hour AMP slash bio slash micro um, course as foundation. So I think, Brooke, what, she, what you were saying is this was for a basic intro AMP1 class. Now, we've already had the students purchase their textbooks that I get from F.A. Davis every year, which are very clear and concise um, and not too wordy, lots of nice pictures that explain things visibly. And it's really great, but I do think in the future, maybe we won't even need to have them purchase a, a textbook for that purpose. It's not like they're doing AMP one and two and four credit courses. But my biggest thing is, especially since COVID is, I usually do dissection labs on, you know, I do the, the kidney, the brain, the heart, um, and that was interesting about the aortic arch and you can't see it because they've chopped it off those sheep hearts. But um, I'm, I kind of want to learn more about just streamlining that in. But I loved how you had your labs. You made a YouTube channel to explain all the labs to them. But I have no idea how to go about making my own YouTube channel, although I love that idea. Brooke? Uh, well, really, because I have a Google account, uh, my yeah. Google account just kind of links up to my YouTube channel. Um, so it's kind of funny when I try to pull up YouTube, when I'm lecturing, it pulls up a bunch of kids videos because my kids are always on my YouTube account. Um, but with the Screencast-O-Matic, it's really a pretty easy system to use. You just sign up and it'll pop up this little square on your screen and it'll say, okay, it'll record anything in that square. And you just hit the record button and then you hit done. And one of the links, it'll ask you, you know, how you want to save it and you can save it to YouTube. So really if you go to YouTube, you just can sign up, you know, for a YouTube account. And then as soon as you, as long as you stay signed into YouTube, which I do, um, and it, you know, if you, I don't know if you have a awesome. Google account. Yep. Yeah, we do. Oh yeah. So you just use your Google credentials and it'll sign you into YouTube. Oh, and then cool. when you're and done recording the video, it'll just automatically upload to your channel. Okay. And then how do we access screen, um, Costomatic you were saying? I've never heard of that. So this is the, oh, yeah, the website. Okay. Okay. Start recording for free. Okay. And it, All right. You just have to watch your time because it, um, if you do the free one, which, you know, free is always good. Right. It limits free you to 15 good. minutes. Um, so like on my, so here's my YouTube. You can tell my kids always get on there. Um, so <laughs> on my YouTube channel, um, you know, here's the videos that I, that I have so far. I see. I see. So you would um, assign the students to go to your your YouTube channel or do it in class, right? Now yeah, right and so yeah. Um, in my assignments, I just have, is this my, yeah, this is the labs. So in my assignments, um, when they click down, they just click on the link. Oh, this isn't the lab one. Um, I can't click and talk. I just can't do it. They just click on this mm -hmm. link and it'll take them right to the link to get to the YouTube video. And so that's part of the. Um, okay. Okay. So you're inserting the link into the thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it makes it easy on the students um, because all I have, we use Moodle for our LMS. And so all I have in our Moodle is this little sidebar keeps getting in the way. You know, for the students, it's a little, there's a little more to it now because everything is online. Um, right. But, you know, they just click, here's the link for the lectures, here's the link for the labs, um, here's see, the link I for see. OpenStax. And that's, that's all that I have in, in our okay. LMS. Um, okay, that was very course. helpful. Thank you. I love that OpenStax um, option too. Yeah. And nice. one thing too is that we have, you know, different ways. Brooks talked a little bit about the the way that she's organized and the way that she's utilizing it. Brooke, I'm, if you don't mind sharing your screen, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen really quick and show a couple of advanced features. So um, 
with Visible Body, we have um, a number of different resources and we provide full training and support. Um, so we have resources that we can send so you can you know, get started on your own. Um, you guys can see my screen? Yes. Great. So within Human Anatomy Atlas, um, we have these system views that are set up and these system views are set up because these are oftentimes the views that you see in a textbook and these correspond to that so that it, they're designed from the beginning for teaching and learning. And <clears throat> Brooke um, showed this a little bit, but you have the ability where you can go in and you can layer in entire systems. So I can put in the entire skeletal system here or take it away. Or I also have the ability to work regionally. So I can come here and select the thorax and then add the different components for that area. Um, I also can add or look for content utilizing this anatomy search feature. So I can click here and I can then type in, you know, say the um, diaphragm and it's going to show me that. And so it highlights it and takes me down to that diaphragm so that I can see it if I don't know where something is as a student. Or if you want to create a specific view based on what you're teaching and the information you're covering, again, this is applicable for anatomy and physiology courses, but also other allied health courses. We have this used at medical schools. Um, it can be used in a lot of different areas. We talked about kinesiology, exercise science, um, you know, lots of different components. I can type in here and I can create the view that I want. So here, if I type in so as and spell it right, you can see here that it allows me then to add that, that view here. Um, as I was clicking in there, I um, clicked away some different components. I isolated that view so I can even go step by step back utilizing this history button and it will take me back and undo those different components. So that's nice because if you go through and lecture and are making different changes, you can then review the content that you lectured by clicking on that. The other piece is, is that, so to go back to the home screen in all of our programs, you click on these four little squares. We also have a gross anatomy lab view. And so this is an experience that then puts that body, um, that gives students that whole entire body experience so it replicates. So if you have a cadaver lab um, that you can't access right now, this is a great replacement. But at the same time, with a cadaver lab that you have, you also have the ability to have this complement that cadaver lab so that students have the ability to go through and dissect content away and identify the structures that they're going to maybe be seeing in that live cadaver lab. Um, again, you have that same functionality where I can turn on or turn off entire systems. Um, there's lots of advanced functionality here as well. So when I select a muscle, and this is from any view, if I select a muscle, I have a details tab that takes me in and it shows me the origin and insertion of that muscle. And so this is great because it really allows students to see how that latissimus dorsi goes through and connects. And you can see here, we've got red for origin, blue for insertion. We can add blood supply, we can add innervation. And again, we always have that textbook information and pronunciation. It's coming. I promise. I've got must have something with my settings. But then I also have muscle actions here. So I selected the latissimus dorsi. So this is showing me related content to the latissimus dorsi. So I can click here. And this will then show me that muscle action in conjunction with other actions as well. So sorry, my load time's not as good as Brooks. I've been having internet issues for the last couple of days. You can see here, I'm looking for networks. Things get clicked, clicked on and clicked off. Um, so I apologize for that. But with our content, you have the ability to interact in a lot of different levels with our material and with our content. Um, and so for advanced users, if you're teaching something other than an A&P course, there's a lot of applications. And again, we'll help you get set up for that content. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing now and let's move on to the next question since I'm having issues with getting this to load, so. No problem. All right, so I'm gonna go over to Sarah, Sarah McNorton, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to ask some questions with Brooke about her assessments. How often, what kind of assessments do you do? Is it just quizzes or do you do those fillable 
PDFs or Brooke, you're muted. There we go. That might help. Um, sorry. So I um, didn't use the fillable PDFs because I already had everything built when those fillable PDFs came out. But those are they're pretty awesome. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, in the lab correlations, they have labs that are already pre-made. And now they have, when you click on the PDF, you can actually fill in the PDF so that students can then save that and email that in, which is a really awesome feature. So for my assessments, what, I, what I've done for my labs, I have, you know, the labs, and then I have a post lab quiz. And this is at, in every lab at the end, I have a post lab quiz. Some of them, like with the muscles, the joints, um, you know, the articulations, I have some practice quizzes just so they can get a little more practice in. But my post lab quizzes, there are 10 to 15 questions just to kind of um, assess their knowledge at the end of the lab. All of those average together to equal one lab practical grade. And so if you haven't seen their quizzes, this is kind of what it what it looks like. This, I did a, a short answer quiz. I do short answer quizzes and dissection quizzes for my labs. And so this pops up and they'll just, you know, enter their text and submit it and then I'll grade it. Um, the dissection quizzes, those are those are pretty awesome. I actually did, we just took a practical yesterday. And so part of that practical was a dissection quiz. And the dissection quizzes are really neat. Um, so for, while well, this is loading for my summer, I'm doing uh, four practicals and then one of the grades will be the average of the post lab quizzes. And then I do the same thing with a lecture. I do, at the end of every module, I have a quiz, and all of those quizzes will average together to equal one lecture exam grade, uh, and then I do my four lecture exams. We don't, this, it's a five-week summer AMP course, so we don't have time for a final. Um, it's pretty, um, pretty fast and crazy. Um, and so here, you know, select the fibular collateral ligament. And so, you know, they'll just select, uh, you know, select and hit submit. Uh, and it's pretty neat. They, you know, rotate it around. If they need to uh, hide a structure, they can. If you want to be, make it a little more challenging, you can do, you know, like the full skeletal system view. And so then they have to figure out, okay, where do I need to zoom into? Uh, what structures do I need to hide to select the correct answer? And so the, the dissection quizzes, those are really neat. They're a really good replacement for an actual, um, you know, when you pin models and tag models. And also what I've done with my practicals, I've gone in when you go to my apps, when you go to the Human Anatomy Atlas, at the bottom, there's a little um, a little tab. You know, Mary showed you some of the tabs along the bottom. One of them is download, download image, download view. Um, and so I've gone in and done kind of screenshots on the different images in uh, Human Anatomy Atlas. And I asked several questions over that view. And um, this one's just a short answer. Uh, when you go in, this is a clavicle, you can click on the details on the bones and it'll give you all the landmarks. And so I have that labeled. Uh, and so that's kind of how I've had to do my, <laughs> we've all had to do online assessments. I really feel that, especially for the lab practicals, students aren't missing out on uh, looking at those models and being tested on those models because, you know, I'm able to have it right here. Um, so. I feel like it's, and even, you know, I might even stick to this online platform uh, for giving practicals and exams. I may have some models, uh, but really, I, I think online is, is going to take over. <laughs> so hopefully I answered all your questions. I probably did more than answer your questions. 
Yep, that's great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, all right, I'm going to go over to Mary again. I think, I'm not sure actually, Mary, I'll unmute you. I, maybe we answered your question, but go ahead. I don't know if you had another one. No, I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. You're welcome. No problem. All right. So let's see. I think we are through most of the questions. Is, are, are there any other questions? You can feel free to just raise your hand as well. You don't have to type it into the chat. Um, we, and we also are, can take some time and maybe show the new pathology and physiology app. And yeah, that would be great, Mary. Let me to go ahead and get set up for that while we're waiting. So, and uh, I'll pull up my iPad so we're not going to have issues, hopefully, with the internet. So, gotta love that component. So, we're gonna go <laughs> screen. Nothing like a demo with issues accessing. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm setting up so that I can um, share my iPad with you. And so, this is something that you're able to do um, when you get visible body resources, not only do the students have downloads, but you also have downloads. And so you can put this content onto your devices so that you can familiarize yourself and look at the content in the in between moments of, you know, waiting in a doctor's office like Brooke talked about or eating lunch or what have you. And um, it makes it so that you don't have to be sitting at your computer like, okay, I'm going to take this next hour to focus on this course. You can really just play around with it in your in between times. Um, this is Human Anatomy Atlas, and so this is the app that I was in before when I had some some issues, and we had looked at the gross anatomy lab function, and we had gone into the details of a muscle to look at the muscle action, and so here you can see I selected this muscle. I can go into the details tab, and that's where it takes me in and shows me that origin and insertion, and this is an example of the 3D illustrations here. So we have then that moving and the muscle is set up. We've got the knee extension here. We have additional related content. You have the ability so that you can select multiple structures and you can fade those so that then you can see that articulation of what's happening Oops. within that component. And so you can see here, you can then see that articulation here. Now, a human anatomy atlas features augmented reality. What augmented reality does is it takes the figure and puts it into your space. So I just click on this button right here, AR, and you can see that it's looking for a structure. And so there's the cords on my floor. So if I click on that, what it does is it then brings in that structure into my space. So here's my office that you can see and my lunch, which I didn't finish. But you can see here that you have that same ability. And I can do that with any of the views in augmented reality. So I can go to the brain and spinal cord and I now have that view and I can select any structure and get information so you don't lose any functionality. And I can even push through into that structure. Now we talked a little bit about the lab activities that we offer. <clears throat> and in the little window, you may be able to see that I have one of our lab activities that set up. So this is one on the heart. And when I come over and hover over that lab activity, you see that I get that blue arrow. What that will do is that's recognizing that structure so it then pulls up that structure so that students have the view that they need to be able to complete that worksheet. And again, same functionality, I can select material, I can dissect content away. So lots of great resources that are built in here as well. Going back to the main screen, again, I click on those four little squares. That is the same in all of our programs. The user interface is very clean, very easy to use. You can see here we have a regional view. We have cross-sectional views. These cross-sectional views are set up in such a way so that here you can see that I have this interactive and I can select different components. And when I select this little box on the bottom left hand corner and this may kick me out because sometimes with zoom it does what it does is it actually pulls up a, a cadaver slice and a scan that matches that view that we were looking at so i'm just going to go back in here and so here you can see where i was before i can select anything it gives me that information and i can see that 
those different components, and I have a corresponding cadaver view. We also have microanatomy. So we've got the eye, we've got simplified nephrons, the alveoli, we've got great dental content. So if you have a dental hygiene program or a dental assisting program, and then the muscle actions, originally we looked at them and we drilled in through that muscle, but we also have the muscle actions set out here as well. So this is in Human Anatomy Atlas. So it features the augmented reality. It's part of the platform. Students don't need to have any special software. Basically, any newer mobile device, like three years, three or four years or newer, will include the augmented reality software. When Apple was developing the augmented reality software, they reached out to us. We were one of three companies that they reached out to to build software content. And so we were the first to then provide augmented reality content. And now you see that with a lot of different components. So this is our newest app, Physiology and Pathology, which we're really excited about. So this is going to be added to Visible Body Courseware very soon. In fact, probably in the next couple of weeks, it's going to be included as part of it. Students will have access to it. Faculty will have access. You'll be able to create assignments and pull in individual assets. Um, and there's no additional charge for that. So this is an example of our latest feature. So here I'm looking at the physiology of the cardiovascular system. So you can see that we have these different units that are set up up here. And when I select this, I now have a beating heart that I can interact with and I can dissect content away. So you can see here, I can do and dissect that. And over here, you can see that we have a lesson. So again, this is a guided walk through this content with more information. And so you can see that I can select different structures and students are able to read in context so that component that Brooke was talking about with, you know, these different aortic components and these arteries, like here's another way to see that as well. But here I can then work through this lesson, click here, and this takes me in. And you can see down in the bottom, we have this interactive model so that I can turn on or turn off different features. So this first one, this beats per minute, allows me to really slow that content down. So I can put that at 16 beats per minute, and then I can select that structure to see what's happening. And I even have the ability here to then dissect that content away. So here you can see we've got that. So I can fade it, or I can hide it. So seeing what's happening with those mitral valves, I can add additional details. So I can add the, the, the fluid. I can add directionals. We have an electrical charge that I can turn off or turn on. You hear the heartbeat. And then we even have a readout that's interactive. So with the new physio physiology, physiology and Pathology app, it's taking content to the next level. So here, this works through the different components of the physiology where we have the heart chambers and valves. We have the cardiac cycle, heart conduction, blood vessels. So really creating this extensive experience and again it's something that you can assign and utilize as a lecture tool and you can bring this up and talk about it in your own words students can review it and look at it before class or after class and then additionally we have in here are more of our pathology videos so in the first um view that of course where that we saw physiology animations contains about 40 pathology videos and we've added a dozens more pathology videos that build on that content. So we're continuing to expand our library with um, everything being accessible with that same price. And so here you can see we've got all of these different ones. So I'm just gonna play one of these really quick. Hypertension is chronic or intermittent high blood pressure. I can Primary or captioning. essential hypertension can arise from a combination of And you can use this as a lecture tool. So this is something that you can pull up and you can talk about it in your own voice and utilize our amazing graphics. And one thing that's really nice too is that within all of our programs, when I click on the gear icon, I can change this. So Brooke comes from an area that has a very large Hispanic population. So it's very easy to change everything over into Spanish. So for that student that's in English language, is this their second language, they're able to then develop that medical um, vocabulary for their native language, which is gonna enhance their ability to find work and continue their program. So that's kind of a quick little overview of um, physiology and pathology. This is our new app that's going to be included. 
We have the ability to save favorites and create tours like we do in Human Anatomy Atlas. So there's so much material and resources. But again, we provide courses that are set up to follow with a textbook that you utilize. You can go without a textbook. Um, and then we also have um, specific personalized training and support. Right. Thanks, Mary. Um, so we've got a question in the Q&A. Um, the question is from Craig, and it is, with the quizzes slash tests, how do you know the person completing the test is the student in your class and they haven't asked someone else to take the test for them? Uh, so when I do my test, I pop up a Teams video. Uh, so Teams is kind of cool. I know a lot of people use Zoom, but in Teams, you can set up a classroom. And so that's how I did my synchronous lectures. I would just start a meeting. And so that's what I do with my test. I start a meeting and I have students get on and turn on their webcam and turn on their video. So I get to watch them all while they take their test. And during the lab practical yesterday, it was kind of funny because they were like, like all trying to figure out all this stuff. And then they would, I could see them like mouthing the words. And so it's kind of entertaining. Uh, for the quizzes, uh, since that's self-paced, I don't really have a check for that, but they know if they don't do well on the quizzes and don't do the quizzes, they're not going to do well on the test. And you could, could, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you could do the same thing in Zoom too. You could just start a Zoom, a Zoom meeting. And I actually, for my lab practical yesterday, I started it at three and it didn't until six because I had kids stagger, um, you know, when they, when they could take it, when they could get off of work. But, you know, I just kind of, um, do some work and go back and forth. One thing too is that, um, that you know, we've heard a lot of questions about locked down browsers and different kind of ways of, of minimizing cheating. Currently, we do not have a lockdown browser solution, but one of the things that we've instituted with our quizzing platform is that you do have the ability to randomize and pool your questions so that students are, first of all, not getting the same questions. You also have the ability to set a time limit. And the time limit is nice because, especially with the dissection quizzes, what it does is students learn pretty quickly that they need to have prepared to come in and take that quiz. So not only do they need to know the content, but they also have to be familiar with the platform so that they can come in and not have a learning curve for figuring out how to rotate and move the model and do all of those different kinds of things. So it really holds students' feet to the fire to get them to prepare um, and, you know, as Brooke mentioned at the beginning, that the drops, we have some data on a professor who looked at her WDs and Fs and saw a significant drop with her students. And by creating assignments and having points tied to the visible body content, what it does is it forces those students that are at risk, right? You're not worried about the A students. They're going to do everything. They're going to take advantage of every resource that's out there. But if you can provide this platform to a student that would struggle normally and give them incentive in the way of assignments and points that they can get on starting with that very simple getting started quiz. It engages them in such a way and really will help them succeed in your class. Great. All right. So we have uh, another question, then we will wrap up um, from Mary. What do you have in terms of physiology labs? So Maybe I should talk to that. So we have some physiology labs that we've developed with the physiology and pathology content. Plus we also have labs that have been created for anatomy and physiology. And so we do have some content that's available. And Emily, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we have plans for, for creating some more as well. I don't know if you Absolutely. want to add any more detail to that physiology lab question. Yes, so we definitely are working hard to create more physiology content, but Mary's right. Yeah, so we do have some labs that go with the new app and then labs, a lot of labs that go with the anatomy and physiology app. And those are accessible. Um, so your visible body rep will follow up with you and um, give you a free trial of courseware. And so those labs are accessible in the instructor resources section. Um, or you can just go to our website under resources and all of the labs are there as well. All right, any last questions before we wrap up? 
All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for your time this afternoon. Um, thanks, Mary, and thanks so much, Brooke. Uh, this has been really, really wonderful. Um, I'm sure everybody appreciates it, and we will record this and post it on our um, on our website so you can watch it later. And again, feel free to reach out to us. Again, your Visible Body Rep will follow up with you. But if you you know anytime you want to contact us, you can just go to our website and fill out any form that go those go to human beings so that you'll get a response right away. <laughs> so thanks again, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thanks again. Thanks, Brooke. You're awesome. Really appreciate your partnership. Oh, of course. I appreciate you all. Take care. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.